Welcome to Science and Futurism. Today, we'll take a deep dive into the heat shield of the SpaceX's next generation rocket, Starship. In this video, we'll see why there is a need of a heat shield for atmospheric re-entry, the types of heat shields, earlier heat shield concept for Starship and what it is currently going to use. So, without wasting any time, let's get started. Spacecrafts that re-enter the Earth's atmosphere from the orbit travel at very, very high speeds, and with very high, I mean 7 to 8 kilometers per second. In order to land safely on Earth, the spacecraft need to decrease its speed in the range where we can safely deploy parachutes or aerobrakes. So, they decrease their kinetic energy by converting it into thermal energy. The kinetic energy the spacecraft have while re-entering the Earth's atmosphere is roughly 13 megajoule per kilogram compared to explosives like TNT which have around 4 megajoules per kilogram. So the spacecraft have enough energy that can vaporize almost anything that we know of. However, the good news here is that most of the energy that is produced during re-entry is absorbed by the atmosphere itself and a small portion is absorbed by the spacecraft. So, how is this kinetic energy converted into thermal energy? In many sources, you will find the answer to be atmospheric drag or friction to be the mechanism behind it. While it is true for aircrafts that travel at supersonic speeds, but it is not the case in the spacecraft that re-enters the Earth's atmosphere at hypersonic speeds. When a spacecraft re-enters the Earth's atmosphere at hypersonic speeds, the atmosphere just cannot get out of the way easily. The particles of air around the spacecraft try to reach similar velocities as the spacecraft, which results into immense pressure and very high temperature, which leads to the formation of a shock wave. The shock wave is where most of the re-entry heat occurs. However, even the small amount, about 1-5% to that the spacecraft need to bear during re-entry, it develops the temperature that reaches up to 1600 degrees Celsius. So, in order to safeguard the sensitive instruments and the crew on board a spacecraft, the heat shields are required, which radiates or absorbs the re-entry heat and keeps the thing inside the spacecraft at normal conditions. There are different types of heat shields, which include ablative heat shields, thermal soak heat shields, passively cooled heat shields and actively cooled heat shields. The most common type of heat shields in a spacecraft are ablative heat shields. Here, the heat shield is designed to ablate, that is, the heat of re-entry causes chemical and physical changes in the material which causes a part of it to evaporate away in a gas. This provides us with three benefits. The chemical reaction and the phase changes in the material will take the heat in. Secondly, the gases that evaporate will take the heat away from the spacecraft and finally, as the gas escapes, it forms a boundary layer which will protect the spacecraft from the actual atmosphere. Such heat shields were used in the Mercury, Gemini, Apollo and the Orion spacecraft and also by the SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft. For instance, the heat shield of the Apollo was made of phenol formaldehyde resins which was supported by honeycomb structure made of fiberglass. The resins would evaporate during re-entry, protecting the spacecraft. The another type of heat shield is thermal soak. This type of heat shield was primarily used in the space shuttle. As the spacecraft re-enters the atmosphere, most of the heat is produced in the front side of the spacecraft which is facing the atmosphere. However, some of the heat is radiated out and can reach the other side of the spacecraft. So, in order to deal with this, the space shuttle had different heat shields at different places depending on the heat load that they need to endure. For example, the heat shields at the bottom were tiles made of silica glass fiber. These tiles were lightweight and had low conductivity and would absorb bulk of the atmospheric heat. The heat conduction here is very low, so low that you can hold the tiles with bare hands when it is glowing red. During re-entry of the space shuttle, the shock waves would be closer to the nose cone and the wing tips. As a result, the heat shield there was carbon-carbon composite that can handle even higher temperature. The other type of heat shield is passively cooled heat shields. These heat shields would first absorb the heat and then subsequently radiate it back to the atmosphere. However, 
The materials used for this are beryllium, titanium and copper which would substantially increase the weight of the spacecraft. Hence, the thermal soak and ablative system become more viable in spaceflight. We will talk about the actively cooled heat shield system in a bit. The Starship will be using stainless steel which itself can handle some degree of heating. As a result, the Starship will need heat shields only at the windward side that is the side that faces the atmosphere. The Starship is designed for its goal to make humanity a multiplanetary species by forming a colony on Mars. The Starship will need to re-enter the atmosphere twice in a mission to Mars, firstly in the Martian atmosphere and secondly in the Earth's atmosphere. During re-entry, the temperature of the windward side of the Starship can reach up to 1700 degrees Celsius. As the Starship will need to re-enter twice, ablative heat shields cannot be used as there is no way of making such materials on Mars. So, the early heat shield concept of Starship included actively cooled heat shields. Actively cooled heat shields include temperature resistant metal alloys that incorporate cryogenic fuels that circulate through them and absorb the re-entry heat. The SpaceX's Starship included such heat shield system. As the stainless steel is very shiny, it can reflect some amount of re-entry heat, but this is not enough. So, the windward side of Starship was going to have one more layer of stainless steel, but this new layer was going to be 310S stainless steel which could sustain more peak temperatures. Between these layers, there were going to be pores and small tubes that would flow cryogenic methane that Starship uses as fuel to the exterior of the ship to cool the surface during re-entry. This was going to be kind of like sweating where the heat is absorbed by the cryogenic methane which vaporizes it. And as the heat shield incorporates the methane that is used by Starship as a fuel, it can also be created on Mars. This would also decrease a substantial amount of weight as they wouldn't need any heat shield material. However, after further analysis and testing, the team at SpaceX found that ceramic tiles would actually be the more appropriate and lightweight option. The CEO of SpaceX, Elon Musk, announced on Twitter that they have shifted the heat shield system of the Starship from active cooling to something more traditional. They are going to employ ceramic tiles that will absorb the heat during re-entry. The ceramic tiles are going to be hexagonal in shape and also going to mechanically attach to the stainless steel body of the Starship, unlike the space shuttle whose heat shields were glued to the surface. As the Starship uses stainless steel body, the required thickness of the ceramic tiles is very low and the heat shielding will again be required only on the windward side and possibly the flaps on the windward side as well. SpaceX have tested these ceramic tiles many times. They were first tested on CRS-18 mission. This test was done to see whether the tiles can survive the re-entry temperature and was a success. These tiles have subsequently been tested on Starhopper and other Starship versions. They have also undergone full duration re-entry heat testings where they were blasted with heat from torch for estimated duration of the Starship re-entry. SpaceX now have robots that can mechanically attach these tiles to the Starship which will speed up the process substantially. Elon Musk also mentioned that if they see any erosions of the tiles in future, they can add transpirational cooling for that region. In any case, the SpaceX team are convinced that the hexagonal tiles are going to be the best option for the Starship and various tests also points towards it. Ultimately, Starship will be fully reusable and the current heat shields can be used again with little to no refurbishment at all. However, the effectiveness of the heat shields of the Starship can be seen practically only when it reaches orbit and re-enters the atmosphere. With the recent development and flight tests, the Starship is expected to reach orbit next year, that is 2021. The heat shields will be one of the most important part of the rocket as it will need to be effective enough to keep the passenger and equipment inside the Starship safe and under normal conditions. So here it is, we saw how a heat shield functions, the different types of heat shields and the heat management system of the SpaceX's Starship. Do let me know your views about this video in the comments down below. If you like the video, do consider subscribing the channel. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.